Making a game is hard, especially when you're trying not to blow up your game when dumping chunks of data into files. That being said, making a game can be fun. It just takes a lot of patience to move forward and making sure that you always check your code to avoid thousand errors before your computer starts begging for mercy. Taking that into consideration, I started brainstorming some nice ideas on how to efficiently load chunks from files and save them back again, but I had some problems. When I started off trying to get the chunk load towards the disk, it was kind of hard, but it turns out that I was actually creating a lot of random access file objects, which was really bad for memory. Although the system is not perfect, I'm just glad it works and I can be able to save the game state and reload it another time. Additionally, I can also build things like any structures and have it to be saved to file and all that time that I spent for that structure will not go to waste. Plus, Minecraft is a great resource when it comes to building your Fox game and that's pretty much how I got through this. Plus, me looking at some helpful articles that I think is way better in explaining on how to build a Fox engine and other pretty cool things. So I basically ended up separating the chunk IO into a different class that will handle all the region format saving. And I want to aim for a Minecraft Anvil region format. I also set my region size to be 16 by 16 by 16, which will include about 4,096 chunks, which is a lot and each of my chunks is 32 cubed, and that's a good chunk of the world being saved towards the file, but it also requires a lot of memory to save and load that. Instead, I thought of a way to save chunk columns, and this significantly improves the performance on the memory side. After this, I went to go touch some grass and to take a look at my chicken. Additionally, I also made some changes to way how the server loads on different threads. It turns out that Minecraft uses a boss thread worker pattern, which basically means that there's one boss thread and the boss thread distributes all the tasks to small little threads to speed up the process. So I implemented that into the backend server for the client or just a standalone server. And as you can see, the parallel processing actually helps when it comes to loading chunks within the render distance. Plus, we don't have to deal with laggy frame rate on the client. And additionally, we have faster chunk loading for our world. Yay. Next, I also want to finish up on the sky from the previous video that I did, and that is adding stars and moon towards our scene. Also, big thanks towards our texture artist for designing the moon, and it looks really good for our sky. So the first thing I started working on was implementing the stars, and it's actually quite interesting how Minecraft renders it. So apparently the stars in Minecraft are rendered one by one, which is actually very slow. So to fix that, I can use instance rendering in OpenGL, which actually only use one draw call. On the CPU, it only takes one render call to render all the stars in the sky. But on the GPU, it just caches the memory and just reuses it. Thus making this an optimal way to render all the constellations in our sky. There we go, we got our stars rendering up in the straight line and they're all curved around the player in our custom sky for our game engine. Now, the only problem is the stars need to be randomly placed, which means they have to have their own matrix transformations. So OpenGL has a fancy way to send the matrix through a vertex attribute. And once the matrix enters into the GPU, the GPU uses the matrix to transform the star into the proper position on where it's placed in the sky. Now, therefore, we can render a lot more stars in our sky more effectively than Minecraft. Now, here's a clip of the results that we have made. Now, here we go. There's our sky and you can see all of the different patterns of the stars. And right now, this is using instance rendering. And this is way much more better than rendering it object by object, which also increases the memory usage of VRAM. Not to mention that Minecraft also renders the star very poorly because that's why the sky probably lags when you turn it on and it is part of the reason why they have a setting to turn it off. Additionally, it also allows for more objects in the sky. If you want to add different colors of stars, all you have to do is basically define a new star instance and that will render all the different instances of the stars. And in order for us to render a moon, all we have to do is duplicate the exact same code for the sun, which is a quad and we put it up in the sky and it renders perfectly fine. 
And with that being said, the sky is actually looking pretty good. I also have plans in the future to maybe add some random procedurally generate constellations. Currently right now, the star placement is by the world seed, which also makes some very unique patterns if you look up into the night sky. Other than that, I have more plans to be able to add planets, hopefully that you can be able to travel to. But for right now, I'm still trying to get the alpha version release, hopefully out pretty soon for our game. And hopefully that'll be out within a couple of videos. Also be sure to check out the latest video. And also if you guys want to join our Discord community, I do have a link in the description and all resources that I found building this engine is all in the description. Have a good one, everyone.